It's their third evening together and our diet swappers are looking back over their lives. How old are you on that one there? I'm 16 there. was when I started to live by myself. And is that when you started? Started... Um, way on? Yeah. Um, there, I'm 19 now. Right, so that's about three years. Yeah. That just does not look like you. No. That looks like your fat auntie or something like that. That's yeah, I was eating yeah. all the wrong things. You're eating cheese, though? Oh, jeez. <sighs> and then this one here, I was 20, just about to have my first baby there. To be honest, I got to the point there where I was like, well, do you know what I mean? I'm big anyway, I'm yeah, big, yeah. I'll just eat whatever I want. After I had Edward, it was a really difficult birth with him. Mm. And a lot of blame, as it were, was put on me that it was difficult because I was an overweight way. mother right. and stuff like that. But and between there birth, and there, how had you got down to that? I did my slimming plan. Right. I got down to a nice weight, yeah. got down to about 10 stone, looked healthy, fell pregnant with George. And I think that is where some of my problems started relating to food. Yeah. I think I had a fear that I was going to go back to right. that. As Alice puts her controlling ways with food in the frame, Stu has some surprises of his own. I think I'm 17 there. Look at how different you look. I think I pulled that night. You look surprised <laughs> dressed like that. Hello. That one there, I think I'm about 21 there. Probably about 23 there. I was married there. Right, yeah. so what happened in between there? I'm not as happy there. Are you still married? Still married, but not happy. I think we just drifted apart a little bit. Yeah. Maybe wanted different things. So I started drinking more, going out more. So do you think that going from happy to unhappy, mm. I mean... It's, it's sharp, hasn't it, yeah. It's just blatantly obvious why I'm fat and what's happened and when it happened. These emotions up and down and eating, have, it's become a way of life as opposed to a consequence of something. So I don't know any different now. So far, Alice has struggled eating Stu's supersized diet, not helped by all that cheese. Whilst once again, Stu faces a precisely weighed out 30 grams of cereal and a splash of skimmed milk. Wow, look at all of that. Look! <gasps> Cheese fat. Oh, my God. Really stodgy. So the amount of cornflakes are in here, how much have I got? I always have um, 30 grams worth. What's the reason for that? When I was losing weight, that was, like, the... The amount that was oh, recommended, recommended right, as yeah. a as a medium portion, I thought medium was okay. I don't want to be rude, but like mm. these portions are huge. Oh no, no, yeah, no, you're right. And <laughs> um, what, what you have to understand is I don't see this. Later that morning, the stress of eating Stu's supersized meals leaves Alice at rock bottom. I just feel so. Awful, really tired and really like lethargic and really like just gross and it's, it's just a horrible feeling that food can make you feel like that. Alice's obsessive portion control and the stress she feels when she's got food in her stomach is ringing alarm bells for Dr. Christian. Has anyone talked to you about anorexia? It's sort of like been brought up that you know that that could be the route that will go down if I carry on. I, I have to say to you as a doctor you are displaying an awful lot of the signs of anorexia. Mm. The sort of fear of food, you know? You really are. And that's really why I'm worried and why I want to come and talk to you. And I think it stems from fear a bit. Yeah. That fear of going back to your old self when you were overweight. Mm. Why does that upset you? Because I don't want to be like that. <laughs> You know, I've I've seen I've seen what it can do to people. You know, and it's just that's why I need to sort it out now. If me talking about it does scare you a little bit, and I mean this in a really nice way, good. Yeah. You know, because I want to scare you a little bit to make sure that you see the need for change and that you actually implement that change. 
I've had this chat with Alice because I want her to understand the serious consequences her eating habits will have on her physical and her mental health. For the rest of this week, I want her to focus on increasing her portion size and realising that eating sensibly will not make her obese again. Will Alice's chat with Dr Christian make a difference and get her to increase the amount of food she's eating? Lunchtime today brings another supersized serving. It's just the same food over and over and over again. Yeah. That's two muffins, four sausages and yet more cheese. But this time, can Alice manage to finish it? It's just so fatty. Oh, my God, I only choked on the stringy cheese. Because now it's, like, cooling down, it's just going hard. See, I wouldn't get that because it'd be gone by now. You're loving it, really, aren't you? Mm. <laughs> I'd go on a day, a double day. You can do it. Amazing. It's a huge breakthrough for Alice as she finishes her first supersized lunch, despite all that cheese. On the final day in the feeding clinic, it's time to address the fact both Stu and Alice avoid exercise. Oh, wow! You love it, don't you? You mountain biking. Stu used to cycle with his girlfriend until his excess weight broke his bike. Me and my girlfriend, Dan, we're in a, a mountain biking club and I stay behind. A few of them have said, you know, come on, Stu, get out on your bike, you fat bastard. So we've sorted them both out with bikes and Stu's is extra strong. I'm ready. Uh, oh, don't do that. Bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. <laughs> Being on this bike today has made me feel that I really, really want to get back into it. I am really tired, but I'll be doing something like this instead of sitting in the house playing computer games. It's going to allow me and Anne to do stuff together. Our diet swappers are nearing the end of their stay in the feeding clinic and making positive steps to change. But Stu is still not taking the whole experience seriously enough. So is that a new T-shirt, then? That's how I, I live my life, in the fast lane, mate. Sorry, the fat lane. <laughs> well, I mean, look at the bowl. If that was a bowl I'd had, I'd, I'd, I'd have covered in milk now. To give Stu a wake-up call about the health implications of his weight, Dr Christian has organised a message from America. My name is Tom Watson. I'm 43 years old. I'm from Florida, and I weigh 34 stone. <sighs> My mother really overate, seriously. I saw the example, and I followed it. The bad habits range from mindlessly snacking all day long, potato chips, uh, dip, large portions of pasta crackers and cheese. I would sit down with a pound of sliced cheese and wipe it out in, in one setting. They were all forms of escape for me, food, drugs, alcohol. I was able to quit the drugs and the alcohol, but you know, you have to eat to live. I started driving taxis about 19 years old. It was every couple hours I would hit a drive through greasy burgers and fries. It was comforting to me and whenever I needed comfort, I would eat. Well, all my health problems started in 2002. I had high blood pressure and I became diabetic all within a couple of months of each other. And that moved up to shots. I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy, weight loss surgery. Your stomach is reduced to about a three to six ounce pouch. You're completely full on a child's portion. I need help around the house constantly. Uh, standing doing dishes for, you know, 15, 20 minutes is out of the question. And Stu, if I could give you any advice at all, it would be this. Find out what's bothering you and address it. Because the food isn't the problem, it's just a symptom of the problem. I ended up losing my job driving. I loved it so much. The weight just finally got to me. I don't want to see that happen to you. <clears throat> it's a bit 
shocking, isn't it? And for the first time, you haven't cracked a joke when you've hit an emotional wall. Yeah. And that says something to me. That meant something to you, didn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Just seeing the similarities that we've got. I think there were a lot of parallels with him. Yeah, it was a bit uncanny, to be honest. Like he was saying, he was going to the drive through every few hours. Which is what you do? Yeah. I'll tell you what my concerns have been this <clears throat> week. Well, it's one main one, <clears throat> and that's you still have a bit of an emotional wall up. Yeah, I know. It's defence mechanism. It is. It's exactly what it is. It's yeah. quite unhealthy to bottle everything in, because the way that your upset manifests is usually in eating. <clears throat> in fact, that's what's been happening, I think, for a long yeah, time now. Yeah. And Definitely. you're realising that. To make sure the message stays with Stu, Dr Christian is taking things one step further. You're going to be going out to America. Look at yeah. his life. Yeah, he's going to show you his life as it is at that weight. If that wasn't a wake-up call for you, then I hope your visit to America really will be. Wow. The film's had a massive effect to me. It's kind of knocked the stuffing out of me a little bit. It's like just made me wake up and smell the coffee. It's the final evening in the feeding clinic. Despite what we've seen so far, Stu and Alice don't just live on junk. And tonight, Alice is getting her first balanced meal. Fish, oven chips, broccoli and peas. Oh, I'm so happy about it. And there's new cheese as well. And as Stu gets his first proper meal, Keishan salad, he has a realisation. I don't want to go back to eating that slop I was eating before, because that's what it was to me now. It just seems, seems like, even though it's not that long ago, I need to go by what my body needs more than what it says on the packet. I think we, we both know what we need to do now. Mm. And it's just a case of getting our heads down and getting on with it. Full? <sighs> Very. Our two diet disasters have finally seen the light. Having reached the end of their stay in the feeding clinic, Stu and Alice are leaving with individual healthy eating plans. When I get home, the kids are going to notice a difference straight away because I'm going to make sure that I eat more food, to have more energy with them, to play with them, to do more things with them, and sitting down as a family and eating together. I'll see you soon. Yeah. What lies ahead is being thinner, healthier. Before, I was like the convenience king, and now... The king is dead. Long live the king. <laughs> Coming up, Stu travels to America and sees where his overeating could lead him. Thomas to take all those tablets to keep himself alive. Just don't want to get to that stage. And he and Alice are back in the feeding clinic. Will they have made the changes needed? 